Hello, hello, welcome back. Our heroes are at the Kathiri ruins and enjoying themselves a break. Now, at the end of the last uh, episode, I asked the viewers to make a vote or comment about what scenario we should be taking next. And uh, one of the viewers, Valhalla M, uh, wanted me to play the Siege of Sky Tower. So, I've set it up and let's head out to it. But first, when you go for a quest, um, you start with the Overlord drawing his starting hand. Uh, as you rem remember, the Overlord bought himself a card. Uh, oh, it's down here at the bottom. I'm going for the Warlord uh, Warlord branch, so let's be Warlording a bit. So let's shuffle this good. And Warlord draws himself three cards, which... Not that it will impact the travel any much, but this will be the starting hand. So we're going to be starting with some Dark Might. Frenzy and a pit trap. We haven't seen that. This is a trap. Play this card when a hero enters an empty space. He tests awareness. If he fails, he suffers one damage and loses one movement point. If he has no movement points to lose, such as if he, if he suffered fatigue to move, he's stunned. So have to remember to play that when Overlord could have an advantage of it. So these three cards will be the starting hand. Put them over there. Now let's start moving up towards the Siege Sky Tower. And we have one, two stops I have to take before I reach the Sky Tower. So let's be traveling there. Uh, if you can see, that's a forest location, and uh, I will be pulling the top card of this deck. Let's cut it and see. Oh, it's upside down. There's a river, there's a mountain, and there's some forest. The Overlord's minions emerge. The Overlord chooses one attribute. Each hero must test the chosen attribute. Each hero that fails suffers one damage and one fatigue. <laughs> Just give me a second. Okay, I have chosen. I will choose strength. Uh, I have Cinderell. Uh, she is quite strong. Uh, she has four strength, but the other two has uh, got, let's see, I have Ravaella with one and I have Jane with two. So, <laughs> great chance that they will fail. Now for a test, roll a gray and a black die and we have to try to get, uh, get below or equal to the amount of number on shields. So kind of for Cinderella, if she rolls a three, she will succeed. Let's start off with her then. She will test strength against these minions that emerges. And she rolls a one, so she doesn't suffer anything. Now Jane has got two strength. So <sighs> she succeeds, of course. And we have Ravaella with one strength. She has to take some. And she takes some. Yeah. <laughs> So Ravella, right off the bat, suffers a damage and a fatigue. Maybe because she was she was the one doing all the fighting. Okay, that was the forest. Let's move into the mountains. And see, we have mountains. Arrows fly from behind the boulders ahead. Each hero's test awareness and suffer one damage if he fails. If all heroes fail, each hero suffers one additional damage. <laughs> I love this. 
So let's be rolling up. We have um, Syndra rolling. Her awareness is two. So she suffers a damage. She doesn't see the arrows coming. Jane and Raviella has four in awareness, both of them. So let's go for Jane first. She doesn't take any damage. Raviella, she suffers the damage. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, if all heroes, heroes fail, they didn't because Jane succeeded. So they don't take any extra damage. You see, traveling can be hazardous. And finally, we reach the Sky Tower. And uh, here's the setup for the Siege of the Sky Tower. Upon your arrival at the bastion that overlooks the southern, bo southern border of the valley, the keeper immediately escorts you to inspect the troops and defenses of the ancient hold. The structure is expansive, having several levels that runs, run deep into the mountains. A company of 40 guards and staff maintain the tower, a fraction of the potential garrison. You are two floors from the top when the clamor of an alarm echoes up through the empty stairwells and halls below you. The keeper draws a blade and charges back the way you came. You descend at a reckless pace, but diligently stay within a few paces of the keeper, lest you get lost in the endless passages. You arrive at the gate chamber just as a scaly dragon hybrid retreats toward an open window. A number of guards lie wounded nearby, and the gate mechanism lay in shambles across the floor. Greetings, mortals, the hybrid says, turning on the window ledge. I am Balthier, sign of Gryvon. He scans your faces with visible anticipation, as if expecting some grand reaction of terror and exultation. Met with nothing save for blank stares, he sighs. Ah, no one remembers the classics. Ah, well, soon my name will be feared again. He winks and drops backwards from the window as more forces pour in through the door. Get me an engineer, the keeper calls, then charges into the room. We need to hold this level until we can get the, these gates closed. Yeah. Uh, the setup is described here, but my table, I... Set it up like this, yeah. So I could set it up like that also, but I want to have it more like this so I can fit things in. So I hope the board doesn't get any bigger than that because then I have to buy myself a new table. Uh, okay, so what do we have set up? I have Sir Al Alric Farrow, Belthier, Goblin, Archers, Cave Spiders, one open group and one open group of, of non-large monsters. Well, I have them set up here. I have Sir Alric Farrow, I have Belthier, I chose myself, <laughs> he is some of my favorites. I wanted to have some Ettins. So they are there. And they are inside the castle. Also have some open groups, which will coming out on the board uh, after a while. Mm -hmm. And there's some special rules. Um, also there's some setup. You see, it says, uh, place eight fatigue tokens in the hero's play area. They are there. This is the round counter. We have to survive eight rounds uh, to win this before the forces overcome us. Now the forces, on the other hand, uh, get points if they take the tower. It says Sir Alric, Goblin Archers and the invading force may move off the map through the exit. Each, each time this happens, place a number of fatigue tokens in the Overlord's play area as based on the monster. So, minion monster, one. 
Monster Monster 2 and Sir Alaric Farrell gets 3. So, um, yeah. Uh, first time. Uh, duh, 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 okay. Uh, <laughs> how do they win? Uh, the Overlord wins. If the Overlord has 8 fatigue tokens in his play area, the follow with the following. Yeah, so then the Overlord wins. So, if the Overlord gets to the. What's that exit? Yeah, this is the exit where the spiders are. If they get there and off the board, they get the tokens. And we have to survive eight rounds to win. So that's the basic of it. Now there's a water tunnel on the middle of the board here. Let's zoom in on that. Uh, yes, there's a water tunnel here. There's also a gate there, which I can. I can shut this but I need to find a lever for it and the lever is in this room uh, these three uh, question marks I have shuffled up and they correspond to the colors for the doors in this scenario so I have to find the correct lever pull it then I can shut the door and if there's a large monster like that it dies so that's something to look out for but also a way for me to stem the tide now uh, um, character standing on a water tunnel um, can move with two movement points move to another waterfall tunnel as if they were adjacent so belt there or some other guy can go here, move into there for two movement points. Yep. Mm -mm. Yeah, and all about these gatekeepers. Now, Belthir, he can take flight, it says. Uh, as an action, Belthir may take flight. If he does, he may choose to carry one non-large monster adjacent to him. Then the Overlord removes his, removes his figure from the map and places him in one of the unique spaces. If the space is occupied, place him da da da. And if he's carrying a monster, remove that monster from the map and place it adjacent to Belthir. Belthir and that monster are stunned. So uh, Belthir starts here now where he's standing, but he can fly to special places around the map. And that's bad thing. Ah, because he has got wings. Uh, yeah, I I painted these myself a couple of years ago. Uh, I recommend everyone to paint their miniatures. Do it. If you're crap at it, like I am, just try. They come out great. Go to the YouTube, buy yourself some paint, find out how you do it and try. Uh, these are not professional done, just something I slapped on myself. They came out decent. So, fun to, fun to have them on the board. I haven't painted everyone. I'm in the process of painting some other stuff uh, also. Uh, so, we may have to paint, uh, play with some uh, white or red minis, but I think you will you will be okay with that kind of this dragon I haven't painted that yet but you see how they are this is the red one depicting the bosses and we have the white ones for the ordinary minions uh, but I will see how far in I come <laughs> and also I have the I have decent three coming very very soon on my on my doorstep so i ha will have a lot of new min miniatures to paint there also but that is what what the fun is i did to have a lot of stuff okay that i think is the basics of this playthrough let's check out the um, forces Okay, these are the forces, and um, let's check out Sir Alric Farrow. He's right here. Uh, he has got unmovable overpower 
and he does one extra damage on a surge. We are playing three heroes, so we will have three movement, 14 health, and rolls a gray and a brown die when defending. He attacks with a blue and red. Now unmovable, this monster may choose to ignore any game effect that would force it to move and overpower as an action. Sir Alric Farrell performs a move action. Each time he moves into a space adjacent to a hero, Alric tests his might or strength. If he passes, he trades spaces with that hero and the hero suffers one fatigue. So he kind of rushes forward. And he's big and strong. As he's quite big coming through. Now Belthir. Uh, see him here, he got his he's got his stats. He's got fly and reach, and he does poison, which is nasty. Moves four, ordinary, and eleven damage uh, health, and he says with a gray and brown also a blue and a red now fly this monster may ignore enemy figures and the effects of terrain while moving it must end its movement in an empty space following normal movement rules reach this monster may attack targets up to two spaces away and of course poison if this attack deals at least one damage after the defense roll the target is poisoned of course with a search now for the Athens and we have a uh, we have a uh, master Athen on the board since we have three players and he rolls blue and a uh, red he also has reach as an action he can throw and he does three extra damage on searches moves only three eight health and defense with two gray dice now, what is uh, throw? Throw. Choose a hero adjacent to this monster. That hero must test strength. If he fails, remove the hero from the map. Then place him on any empty space within three spaces of his original space. He counts as entering that space. Then the hero suffers one. So he throws you around like a ball. Now for the spiders. We have, uh, per three players, we have a group limit of three minions and one master. Here's the minions. Uh, four move, three health and a gray die. They, of course, do poison. One damage extra on a search. Blue and a yellow. Uh, they are melee, of course. There's the master. The master has got web and poison and does two extra damage on searches and he has got five health now what is web each hero adjacent to this monster must suffer one fatigue to move out of his current space this is in addition to another to any other fatigue suffered to move and of course poison which we have seen i have two more open groups i have of course the goblin archers which we saw in episode one so you can pop by there to see their stats and special effects if you like. And I chose for the invaded invading forces, uh, what was it says? Uh, I had to choose one open group. I chose the Ettins and then a non-large monster group, which I chose here. And the, it is the Flesh Molders. Uh, quite nasty fellows. They heal other enemies so I hmm, have to watch out for those four move four health and a gray die mend one of course and does a damage these guys are ranged monster is uh, has got heal and mend two and also does two extra damage on searches and has five health now heal which the monster has Choose a monster within three spaces of this monster and roll one red power die. The chosen monster recovers damage equal to the hearts rolled. And on search mend X, the monster recovers X damage. And that is, the X is here like mend one or mend two. So, 
it, they can heal themselves and heal others or the, or the master can at least the red one they come in with two minion and one master but they don't come in yet because they will be placed at the end of each overlord turn is it uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. reinforcements yeah at the start of each overlord turn the overlord may place a number of monsters on the entrance equal to the number of heroes these monsters can be any combination of goblin archers and invading forces respecting group limits so any uh, amount of goblin archers or invading forces so uh, I think these guys are these guys are the supporting force yeah uh, and at the end of each or at the end of each overlord turn the overlord may place one cave spider on the spider nest respecting group limits so I have the spiders popping out from behind me I have the goblins popping out on the front here so this will be a cool 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 playthrough so let's just get on with it so uh, who is going first I think we're gonna be going with Jane first she has a movement of five so she can move one, two, three, four, five. And have her be adjacent to this. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five. She will stop there. And fire an arrow at the Etin. She uses a uh, yellow and a blue. The Etin rolls two gray. And that's a great roll from the Etin because he rolls only one. Uh, Jane rolls more than enough range one two three four five she rolled seven so she hits and she hits with two dice mm. i could re-roll i have this accurate each time you perform an attack with a bow you may re-roll one power die power dice are the yellow and red and green I guess so let's re-roll the yellow <laughs> it's still one okay so two damage and a surge which I can use um, for another damage so that's two for the Etin now I, I will use Ravaella so she will move four one she's there so one two three four i think she can see the etin with no problem at all of course yeah she will fire off her spire of conflux and she will exhaust her she will exhaust her blaze exhaust this card when you perform an attack after dice are rolled this attack gains pierce x where x is the equal to the number of exhausted cards so exhaust this and that costs her another fatigue she rolls and she will be rolling yellow and uh, blue at in it is gray mm. and it rolls it she rolls uh, one two three that's not enough 
Uh, I then can use the Sun and C. When you use Tidal Blaze, you may exhaust this card to reroll one attack of Paradise. So let's do that. Let's reroll the yellow. And that's even more crappy. <laughs> so she misses, I think. I think she does. Um, she is one, two, three, four away, and she only gets two, so it misses. Meh. But she can use one of the searches she rolled to heal one of the fatigue. Now for Cinderella. She will. She will go. One, two, three, four, and she will also spend two fatigue to move adjacent to the Ettin. One, two, and she will be rolling blue and the red. Ettin with his two defense. Come on. And she rolls a lot of damage. The Ettin rolls three. I could have him re-roll with the search. I will try that. I will have him re-roll this re-roll this two shield. Ah, see? He does poorer. Good. So that is one, two, three, four damage, minus two. So we're up at four damage out of eight on the Atin. Now for the Overlord's turn. <laughs> we have our three cards. I start with drawing a card and we draw into Dark Fortune. So I can play this after I roll a die and re-roll one. Still have my Pit Trap. And Dark Might and Frenzy. At the start of my turn as Overlord, I can place any number of invading forces at the entrance. So let's be starting. Uh, not any number, I three, because I have three heroes, so any. What was the wording? Uh, the Overlord may place a number of monsters on the entrance equal to the number of heroes. So let's be starting with a uh, Master Goblin and two Minion Archer Goblins. Yeah, they are there. <laughs> nice. I have to respect the group limits though, and group limits for the goblins is three minions and a master, so I'm good there. Now, for activating, um, I think I will start with Etin. He's quite pissed because of the because uh, of the. Uh, behavior of our heroes so he will be playing frenzy I'll activate the Etin and he is frenzied play this card when activating a monster during your turn that monster may perform an additional atta attack action this turn additional to his normal two so let's do that playing frenzy and let's have him fight Syndrail our Etin fights with a blue and a red and good Cinderella are rolling a grey die and she has got her shield so Etin rolls four damage four hearts and Cinderella has one Okay, so she will take three damage, upping her to four out of 12. Okay. Then it attacks again. Normally, monsters only get one attack. 
but not this time. It's frenzied. And <sighs> he misses. But I think we will play Dark Fortune. Uh, play this card after you roll dice. You may re roll one. So let's re roll the blue. Come on, peace now. <laughs> oh, much better. Much, much better. <laughs> So that is one defense from Cinderell and five damage from the Etin with the surge that's eight. So Cinderell will be exhausting her shield. So that's eight minus two, six more damage. And she will then be at 10 damage out of 12, ladies and gentlemen. That is a good start for the Overlord. <laughs> so 10 damage and Cinderell is shaken. Next up I will activate the spiders. They will be moving one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. That's one move. And have to move up more. Uh, so one, two. One, two, three. And let's have one, two, three, four. So we have the master behind here. And one two three four yeah <laughs> totally surrounding poor Ravaella. and sadly they cannot attack if i don't have any uh, no no extra cards that gives them any attack at the moment now we'll activate sir alric farrow um he is a bit slow, but um, let's have him go. Oop, just fell over. One, two, three, and one, two, three. He will be starting moving down into the corridor here. I will then activate the goblins, and we're gonna have them run. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, uh, five. And then they will do that again. Um, one, two, three, four. I have to stop there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So they are there. At the gates, at the water gates. Now I have Belthir, and I think I will have Belthir fly, and he flies up, and he lands in the corridor here, and he's stunned. That is the end of the Olor's turn. I think everyone has done their actions. Uh, I can place a case spider on the spider nest but i have the group limit is on the table at the moment um, so i think we can say the first round is over and we discard a fatigue token from the heroes and we go into next round well the action surely ramped up quite fast uh, <laughs> uh, who are we going to play first? Most reasonable thing uh, should be Cinderell, I guess. She's got, she's got 10 damage. Wow, that's just crazy. Okay, I will uh, unexhaust her shield that is ready, back up and 
Good to go. And yeah, she will hit the etin. Red, blue, and uh, red etin has two gray. Oh. And that is a miss. Yeah, starting off with a miss. So that does not connect. She will try again. Second action. <laughs> it's another miss. <laughs> ah, so she misses with both. Um, okay, so let's use uh, let's use Oath of Honor. Choose another hero within three spaces. So, oops, sorry, both here. Uh, so, let's choose uh, Ravaella. She is one, two, three away. And uh, who has a monster adjacent to him? Yes, place your hero figure in the closest empty space adjacent to the monster and perform an attack with a melee weapon against that monster. Oh, no, I can't. This is an action. So, yeah. Nope, I cannot do that. She has spent her both actions. She missed, missed and swung her sword. Man. Okay. Then, let's... I need to kill that. I want to kill that... Uh... <laughs> Etin. Right away. So let's start off with Ravaella. Ravaella Lightfoot will unexhaust all her cards. Let's spend one fatigue. Uh, what good is that? Uh, maybe get to close this door. Hmm. They are coming in. Okay, um, I will exhaust this card, choose another friendly figure in, within three spaces, uh, wink, spending one, I will move <clears throat> again, poor Belther, I will move Cinderell, one, I guess, or maybe I'll do that last. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I I will really do that. I will wait. First, I will attack. I will try to attack. How many health? Three health, and the boss is five. Okay, I will try to attack one of the minions. First action. And she will use her blaze. Perform this card when you perform an attack. After dice are rolled, this attack gains pierce X or X is a number equal to number of exhausted. So here you go. And she takes a fatigue. She will be rolling uh, blue and a yellow for her spire of conflux. And um, the spiders rolls a gray. Okay. And <laughs> she misses. Huh? Uh, uh. I will use Sun and Sea to exhaust this card to reroll one power die. Attack all power die. So let's reroll the blue. And finally, she hits. Okay, and it's a pierce one, so this ticks down to a two. And um, that is no, actually, this is a pierce two now because I have two cards exhausted, so it's down to one. And 
I have on my Spire of Conflux, if two or more elemental cards are exhausted, I can use the Surge for a plus two. So that's one, two, three, four, minus one, it's three. I take this spider out because it's got three health. Also, I will use this tide after I have performed an attack. A monster adjacent, a, mon a monster adjacent to the target suffers damage equal to the number of exhausted. Uh, oh, wait, I defeated a monster. I can exhaust this rune shard, so that's that. Now, let's just finish the attack. I will use the last uh, search to recover one fatigue. And then I will exhaust this. Uh, a, mo a monster adjacent to the target space suffers damage equal to the number of exhausted elemental cards. So that will be three, four then. One, two, three, four exhausted cards. So the boss spider will suffer Four damage, throwing damage all over, uh, knocking Cinderella over. She was there. Four damage on the boss. Now she will uh, exhaust this. Choose another friendly figure da, 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 to move. Uh, one space for each, each exhausted elemental card. So I can have Cinderella move five spaces if I want. And I think I will have her move here. Yeah. Now for Raviella's second action. <clears throat> she will attack again. And she will attack the... Boss spider. And this is what is up with our blue die today. Well, swing and miss again. That is Ravaela done. Now we move into Jane Fairwood's turn. She will be shooting at the at in. Yeah, let's do that. Shoot at the Etin. Etin has two. And she rolls five, six range. And Etin rolls one armor. But I will use my accurate to re-roll this yellow power die. So let's just move them up here. Ah, see, there you go. Five range is enough to hit him. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And she does one, two, three damage. You can use a surge to make it four with the um, armor save from the Etin brings him up to seven damage so let's be adding seven to him cool he's one away let's do it again And she rolls five range and three damage. Etin rolls two armor. And I just need one more to take him out. So he is dead. 
it then slumps over and dies. I can have, let's see, if I move up here, can I shoot anyone from there? New. No, of course. It's a friendly figure there. So I think Cinderella is done. Starting with Alric Farrow moving. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, so he's there. Ready to charge in. <coughs> Belthir is stunned and stunned says discard this token this is the only action you may perform on your turn while you have this card or token so he is no longer stunned now for the spiders I will have um, the boss spider oh by the way uh, At the start of the turn, yeah. Forget about things. I get to draw cards. Uh, I draw a poison dart. Play this card when a hero opens a door or searches. He tests awareness or strength. Your choice. If he passes, draw one overload card. If he fails, he suffers one and one fatigue and he is poisoned. <laughs> nice. So, um, one thing before we go to the go to the spiders. At the start of Overlord turn, I get to place a number of what does it say? I can place a number of monsters on the entrance equal to the number of heroes. These here, these monsters can be any combination of goblin archers and invading forces. So that means the flesh molders. I will place some flesh molders on the board. It looks like my tile has become wonky. Some kind of oh, strange, very strange. I have to put it in pressure. So the flesh molders is on the board. Now let's move to the spiders. Let's start off with the um, master spider. A attack with a blue and a yellow and Ravella Lightfoot uses a black defense eye. And that monster hits her for three, but she blocks three. Sadly though, this it's a surge, so he will use that surge for two damage. But he doesn't poison her. So she's up to four damage out of eight. Now this spider hits her and she blocks the damage there also. Uh, however he will use one search for one damage bringing her to a total of five and the other search for a poison. And poison states at the start of her turn, test strength. If you pass, discard, discard a token. If you fail, suffer one and keep this token, card or token. So that's nasty. She has only got one strength, so she will be suffering from that poison. Now the last spider hits and connects with three damage. She blocks two, so one more goes through, so she's up at six total damage out of eight. Almost had her, but let's see. I could mm, put a search on that. Mm. Nah, nah, I will keep that. Now activating the goblin archers. I have the master going one, two, three, whoop, three, four, five. 
and he will shoot at Cinderell. Range of one, two, three, four, five. So he rolls a blue and a yellow. Cinderell rolls a gray. And her, she has her shield ready. Ooh, maybe we need that. That's six range. That's enough to hit. And she rolls two shields. She, she will use her shield for the third. So she doesn't take any damage. Now this guy goes one, two, three, four, five. Let's just see. Can he see Cinderella? Oh, yes, he can. So he shoots. <clears throat> Same thing. And he is close to uh, his uh, pal there, boss. So he can use surges. Oh, <laughs> so we have uh, two, two range. That's not enough. He misses. One, two. Even with his plus one range, that's one, two, three for the search. He misses. Woohoo! Dodge that. Last, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And he's closer. And trying to hit Cinderella. And that's. Let's see. One, that's three, one, two, three, no, not enough, but he has a surge, plus one range, that is enough, so one, two, three, four, he hits her for three, and, ah, sadly, Cinderella falls over because of all the damage, she will suffer max fatigue of four and she's got 12 damage oh syndrome and uh no overlord doesn't get to draw a card but overlord gets to have one of these <laughs> so i can use my spirited retreat if i like i have to check if any of them have <clears throat> the wilderness trait. The spiders has got the wilderness trait. You see it here. That's the wilderness. So I can use my spirited retreat on them if I like. Okay, that was the goblins. Go. They did way too much damage. So now let's move over to the Flesh smolders or Belthir maybe? No, let's move Belthir since he's here. He's down in the corner down here. So let's move him. He is moving at the speed of four. So he will come one, two, three, four. He will reach Jane. However, Jane will use her one stamina to move uh, one space. So she will move. Hmm. She will move here, maybe, no, she will move here, but I think Belthir has reach, yes, he's got reach, so he will be able to hit her, either way, attacking with blue and a red, Jane rolls a grey, and hits Jane for... One, two, three, four, and a surge. Jane rolls two defense. Uh, surge, he can use the poison. Ow, crudders. Okay, so Jane will take. Uh, I think she will suffer two damage. And she's suffering from poison. Damn. Poison is. Bad. Okay, now for the flesh molders. Flesh molders moves at the speed of four. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there they are. 
I will breach the try to breach the water gate in the next round. Um, anything else? No, I think I moved everyone. And at the end of my turn, I can place a cave spider at the spider's, spider's nest. So I will do that. Yeah, of course I can. I kill the spider, so I have room for one more on the board. Respecting group limits, of course. Now, that will take away another fatigue from our heroes. So they are down to six fatigue points left to survive this onslaught. <clears throat> I will start with Raviola Lightfoot. She has to test her strength, which is one, to see if she succumbs to the poison. And she saves the poison. <laughs> so she will pause and discard the poison. Wasn't, wasn't that potent anyways. Just some small spiders. Now I will unexhaust all of her cards. That is great. Now she will move away. Try to move away. But she has to suffer a fatigue because she's webbed by the boss. So she moves one, two, three, four. Stand in front of that switch there and Cinderella. And she will revive Cinderella. Cinderella gets to roll two red dice. And she recovers 4 HP out of her 12, bringing her down to 8 damage. That is all Ravila can do, I think. First thing she will do, she will pull the lever. Let's pull this lever to see what it is. So she pulls this and it's the green one. The green one shuts the... Oh wow! <laughs> it shuts the green door. That is awesome! So... Bang! That means Belther is shut out. Yeah, um, why a large monster occupies, is uh, Belther a large monster? I don't think that, he occupies one space. Uh, yeah, so he's not large, so he avoids getting shut by the, or squeezed to death by the door, but it slams shut. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we have to s make sure that water gate is shut too, because the, the enemies keeps pouring in there. Okay, that was Sinro's first action. Uh, I think her second action will be a rest. Yeah, she's resting. Which means at the end of her turn, which is now, she will recover all her fatigue. She's, so she's only hurt for 8 damage at the moment. Yep. Now Jane. Jane Proudfoot. She will search this, search this token. And when she does that, she will... Well, she, she, first she will test her strength. She's poisoned. <laughs> yeah. She's poisoned. Rolls for that. And her strength is two. Well, she doesn't manage that. She will suffer one damage and keep the card. 
this damage you will suffer as, uh, suffer as a strain or fatigue. Um, and then she will search. Overlord has got a um, poison dart, but she's already poisoned, so I don't think I will. I, I will hang on to this. Yeah, just hang on to it. So she, I will allow her to search. And I have shuffled the search deck, and she finds a health potion. Hmm. I think this is good. This is good. Okay, so she will take that. Now, let's have her. I will use her heroic feat. Uh, her heroic feat reads, you may move double your speed and perform an attack. This attack may be performed before, after or during this moment movement. So I'll flip her hero cheat over. So that's good. And now question is, uh, should I just attack this master spider and move up? Hmm. It'll come out again on the board next round. Yeah, that's, I will move, before I move, I fire the arrow at the master spider. Blue and yellow, the spider. Rolls gray and she rolls. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's one hell of a save from the spider. And enough range. Sadly, the spider blocks everything. Mm. Exhaust this card. When you perform an attack with a bow before dice are rolled, if this attack does not miss, hmm. well, I should have done that. So I will use my ac accurate to re roll this yellow die. And well, okay, well, look, one, two, three gets blocked by the defense of the spider. But I still have a surge, which means I can do one damage to the spider and the master spider. It's gone. Dies in a hiss of claw and poison. Now I'll continue my movement. I just move that door for sake of that. So I will move one, two, three four, five, six, positioning myself there. This, this door is shut. I have still got one more action and I think I will fire at the goblin chief. And enough range, four range and one, two, three, that's two damage for the Goblin Chief. Ah, okay, let's say for sake's sake, I did exhaust this before rolling now. Forgetting that. Incendiary arrows. So each other figure takes one damage. And that is good news because they only have Four health, the boss has four health and the minions have two each. So let's see if we can take him out. That ends Jane Fairwood's turn. And uh, we're gonna go to the Overlord. The start of the Overlord's turn, I get to put one of my uh, forces in. Uh, invading forces, isn't it? Yeah, Goblin or the open group. So I have one goblin left to place, so he comes in. I draw a card for the 
Overlord, and he gets Tripwire, another trap. Play this card when a hero enters empty space during a move action. He tests awareness, and if he fails, he must end his move action. He can still suffer fatigue to move further or perform a second move action if this was his first. Cool. Now I will activate Sir Alric Farrow. He moves one, two, three, and they keep banging on the gates there. It is shut thanks to the luck of Cinderell. So that is all uh, Alric can do. Then I will activate Belthir and he will take to the skies with Alric Farrow's Alric Farrow in his grasp. Flying, he will land here in his special place as per the quest map. Both of the guys are stunned. And that ends Belthir's movement. Now I will activate the goblins. Goblin master will move up one. Oh no, let's move more. Let's move um, one, two, three, four. Give me five, five. And he will fire at, uh, let's have him fire at Sindrel again, yeah. And this time he rolls two damage, enough range, two damage and a surge. So that means he gets four damage. Cinderella will exhaust her shield again, making that just two damage and she's up to 10 again. Okay. Now this goblin moves one, two, three, Four, and he will also fire at Cinderella. And hits, in two range is enough. Hits with three. However, she rolls a three save, so she doesn't take any damage. But one surge he can use to Amplify his attack with one, so that is one damage going through to Cinderell, and she's up to 11 out of 12. Arr, okay, last goblin moves one, two, three, and he also can see Cinderell. Yeah, they understand her as the most dangerous threat. Come on. And yeah, I think that's enough. <laughs> I think that's enough. Two damage and a surge. So she are knocked out yet again. Boink. And four fatigue on her character cheat. So she's knocked out again. Last goblin goes one, two, three, four, five, and one. Uh, let's see. What do I say? One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four into the water. Now for the flesh molders, they will be starting off. Let's move the boss first. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. That's how far, as, how far is he can go. This guy, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, stands there. 
and um, yeah then it is the spiders let's start with the one in the back here goes one two three four five no they have only four four and uh, one two three four <laughs> now this guys goes one two three four so it's up close with Ravaela and we'll hit her for uh, with um, she rolls a black die defense wise and he rolls and gets one and two searches she rolls three defense that's more than enough to block it so he doesn't do any damage now this guy goes one two it's all he can do one two and stay there yeah oh, let's get some aoe on these guys huh come on jane okay that was my overlord's turn he will put another spider which is the master spider back here on the spider's lair and i will remove another fatigue from our heroes they down to five now overlord has to get the move on so remember getting our getting our invading forces to the exit and over the board gives the overlord the chance of scoring some points so that is the goal of this scenario uh, of course maintaining the uh, hero threat and keep them down as far as I go. Okay, let's head into the next round.